Gracie against McSweeney is effectively a BJJ world champion against the big banging Muay Thai champion. What a mixture. This is a throwback fight. This mm. is to the beginning times of MMA when they were doing styles versus styles. Mm. So this is going to be one of the greatest fights I think tonight to watch, see the history of the sport and how, where it's come and how far it's gotten to. So watch Gracie to try and close the distance, get the takedown. McSweeney's going to stay on the outside, try and land the big punch. Of course, I, I represent Jiu-Jitsu every time I fight, you know, it's, it's, it's been in my family for generations and, and generations, so uh, it's very grateful that I can represent uh, the Gracie name. I see the fight going on what I'm strongest on the ground and what, that he has no chance to survive. If this was a Jiu-Jitsu tournament, then I would have some concern. But as far as I remember, mixed martial arts start standing up and if Roger Gracie can't take me to the ground, that's a very bad problem for him. Fans should be excited for this fight because I'm in it. I, I make fights exciting. Watch my last two 1FC fights and see if you think they were exciting or not. Oh, that's it. It's not going to go any further than that. Yeah, I think I just got to be very careful. He's, he's a very strong guy. You know, he has a, a very strong knockout power. This is not designed for, for, the, for the grappler. This is a very poor, poor rule set for him. BJJ versus Muay Thai, I'll put all my money on BJJ. Yeah, if he goes down, I don't see him surviving for much longer. Especially if he's end up in the bottom, then I don't think he has a chance. If he tries to take me down and he misses by a fraction of a hair and he doesn't get me to the ground, I will kick him straight in his face. I will not hesitate. I really hope you train your best and you're, and you're 100% because you know, I, I'm, I'm ready and I'm coming to win. When I look across the ring, I don't see Roger or Gracie or anyone else. I have full respect for the Gracie family, but he's just another person in my way. I'm just going to knock you out. When they stand side by side, you'll see that McSweeney is a year older. He's a centimeter shorter. Not much in it in terms of the way they look there and the way they stack up. Huge differences in style. This is Brazil against the United Kingdom. Ladies and gentlemen, his next fight is three rounds in a 1FC light heavyweight division. And it's brought to you by Grips Athletics. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a BJJ practitioner. Standing at 194 centimeters tall, weighing in at 93 kilograms with a professional record of six wins and two losses. Fighting out of Hoja Gracie Academy, presenting 10-time world champion from Brazil, Hoja Gracie! And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a striker, standing at 193 centimeters tall, weighing in at 93 kilograms, with a professional MMA record of 14 wins, 11 losses. Fighting out of Sledgehammer Striking System and Tiger Muay Thai. He is a five-time world Muay Thai champion from England, James Sledgehammer McSweeney. And when this battle begins, your referee in charge, Olivier Koss. All right, fighters. All right, guys, watch out for headbutt. No blows back off the head and spine. As you know, no foot stomp to the head, okay? Don't grab the fence. Instead of my coming out of time, protect yourself at all time. Touch glove if you want, back your corner. All right, judge, judge. Hodge Gracie against James Ready? McSweeney. Fight. This fight brought to you by Grips Athletics. Don't blink. Big difference in body shape, isn't there, Josh? Here. Yeah, Hodger's a little bit taller. You also, you'll notice that Hodger's gonna stay on the outside, try and use his reach, wait for McSweeney to kind of overcommit to something, and then get the takedown. Potentially punch him to the clinch, press him against the fence, get the takedown. Yeah. British fighter, heavily muscled, lavishly tattooed. Nice knee. What a nice Hodger. knee. Hodger's dangerous in the clinch as well, not just on the, as far as on the takedowns. He, he's really aware of using his knees and his, and his punches from inside the clinch. Well, he's a towering man, Hodger, isn't he? This is the light heavyweight division. 
the, the World Championship vacant at the moment. So we're looking for a champion. I wonder if we'll find it in these two. Good left-hand jab there from Roger Gracie. Just clipped McSweeney on the chin. They almost turned it into a little hook at the end of its extension there. McSweeney yesterday when I talked to him was very confident in his stand-up saying that Hodges, he, he hasn't adapted yet to MMA. He said that he, he's not comfortable on the feet. He just, he just, had, he just hasn't transformed into, into a real MMA fighter yet. So he's utilizing this. McSweeney right now, what he's doing is he's switching his stance. He's making it more difficult for Hodges to commit to how he's going to get the takedown. Look how light on his toes McSweeney is. Looking very good right now. They're both looking very loose, aren't they? Yeah, McSweeney's got to be careful, though. He can't get too relaxed. This when he relaxes like Whoa. that. When he relaxes like that, he can potentially get a leg. Hodges get a leg, get a takedown, punch to the clinch, something along those lines. Looking for the left hook there, McSweeney. Leapt into it. He likes that kick. He's seen it a couple of times already. He's using that kick to keep the distance. He's getting he's getting Hodger to think about it so he can't just walk right in and crush the clinch. You don't want to get too close to a 10-time Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu world champion. Nice left hand from McSweeney as Hodger came in. He's got to get a little close because Hodger's longer than him, so he's having a hard time closing that distance. Hodger punched his way into the clinch there. McSweeney shucked him off. You hear the crowd. Yelling Hodger. Got to be quick with that kick if he's going to end up spinning round, doing a 360 like he just did, because Roger Gracie can perhaps leap on that back as he's not facing him. We're still in the filling out process right now, and uh, Hodger's using his, his uh, reach to his advantage right now. Which means he's having to actually jump in to land punches. This is exactly how McSweeney said he wanted to fight. They want to stay relaxed, stay light on the feet, kind of hit the kicks, you know, just don't let his back get pushed to the fence. That's the one thing that we talked about when he was saying, uh, when we talked the other day. He just doesn't want to let his back get pressed to the fence. He doesn't want to be in the clinch with him too much. He's comfortable in the clinch. He just doesn't want to be pushed against the fence. Gracie sends out a nice stiff jab. Really using that reach to his advantage. I expect him to be using the kicks too. He'll, he'll, he'll start using that push kick as well, just like McSweeney is. Do you think McSweeney's surprised by the reach that he's got there and the, the potency of that jab? You don't expect him to be uh, to be this dangerous in the stand-up. No, I think when you start hitting these guys that are this big, though, I mean, everything hurts. <laughs> you know, I mean, a, sti a good stiff jab is... Just the sheer size of someone, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I also think, though, too, that they... Training with the with Henzo and training with the Gracie family. Beautiful knee. Training with the Gracie family. They learned how to utilize. They, the first thing they told him was to utilize his length. You know, make right. people overcommit, get the takedown, and then you know, obviously work for the submission. If McSweeney has to jump in, it makes the chances a lot higher of Hodger getting the takedown. I was just thinking. I wonder One how long it'll take for McSweeney to perhaps get a little bit frustrated, maybe jump in, and then. It's like jumping into a nest of vipers, isn't it, once you get too close to Roger Gracie? Yeah, I think McSweeney needs to stay using those kicks. See how Hodger is now trying to keep the distance with his push kick. That's more of right there what he's doing right there. He needs to do a little bit more of that to keep Hodger guessing, stick and move. But see how he's switching and then staying in one spot? He needs to switch and switch, throw something, and then move. Yo, oh, like that. Great stuff. It was there a right and just like the kick. Now, does he want to get down there with Roger Gracie? I doubt it. Expect him to kick the legs, expect him to back out, kind of kind of knows that he potentially won the round with that nice head kick. But notice how he set it up by moving his feet, moving his feet. Oh, no. a little punch That's down interesting. Ahead. Olivier Cost asked Gracie to stand up. It didn't seem like Gracie wanted to stand up. It didn't seem like McSweeney wanted him to stand up. Rich, what are your thoughts on that? Well, if McSweeney is uh, not actually progressively going to the ground, then it's just a stalemate in action, and it's it's the same principle as two guys standing against the cage, and you want to break them apart. So regardless of what the fighters wanted, what Olivier Cost wanted is action for the fans there, so you've got to applaud him for that. Beautiful knee right there landed by Hodger, coming out of the clinch. Surprisingly, McSweeney shot the takedown. But notice how McSweeney there, he set it up with a low. Set up with a low little body shot from moving from switching his feet. Then he came back in with a head kick. 
Tried throwing the knee, just missed the knee. Hodger able to close the distance, get to the body before the knee landed. Yeah, exactly. He closed that distance before he got really brutal. It's round two when we come back. Arena in Manila, the Philippines, for one fighting championship, Warriors Way. Ojin Gracie takes on James McSweeney. Here's the action from round two. Ready? Rich, I mean, really, how, how would you score that first round? Well, you, listen, the, the, the beginning of the round was just a ton of feeling out. Um, I had I had Roger doing a little bit of damage with, with the knees, but obviously at the end there, McSweeney landed a big head kick. I wouldn't call it a near KO, but definitely a lot of damage. We've seen McSweeney in the past looking for those head kicks on the ground, and that's exactly what he was looking for. He was also able to get the takedown off of that. Because Hodger shot in on it, and then he actually just threw him to the ground. I mean, not a technical shot takedown, but you know what I mean. Oh, big overhand right. Great right hand from McSweeney. Hodger's uh, been susceptible to that. He got he, he lost to uh, King Mo one time with an overhand right combination. King Mo came low with uh, some punches to the body, and then he came over the top. Beautiful. Hodger keeps going to that knee, and that's working for him. He just got to time it just right. Well, his corner men are, are asking, asking him to swing it high. I suspect they mean the knee and the legs. Both are very useful with their feet. They're both using that tip kick really well. That's their range finder. That's where Hodger needs to be careful. He can't just jump in like that yeah, with someone yeah. like McSweeney. Look at Backing off, still managed to send in that right hand in the... And it's notice, dangerous. Notice how McSweeney keeps going to the body, and then he comes over the top of that head kick like he did in the first round that actually caught him. He sends that hooking right hand from an orthodox stance over the top. It's like an overhand right hook almost. So he needs to keep his feet moving though. He can't just stay stationary right in front of him. Switches stance, doesn't he, the Brit? From time to time. For the most part, it's left hand, left leg forward. But he, and he, but he stands square on no matter which leg is uh, further forward. Presents a bigger target quite often. Yeah. Hodger keeps landing that little stiff jab though. I think it's Starting to get under uh, McSweeney's chin. And that's been a, a, an unexpected, somewhat underrated aspect of this fight. The Hodger Gracie left jab. Who'd have thought? Oh, oh. Good takedown defense from James McSweeney. Appreciated the cage side here by the Filipino fans. <laughs> you see McSweeney give him a little shake of the head, like, no, nope, yeah, get it this time. It's going to be harder now for Hodger to get the takedown now that they're sweaty. He should have shot a little bit more in the first round, I think. You'd figure if there was one thing McSweeney would have concentrated on in camp, it would have been takedown defense against Hodger Gracie. It worked out well for him there. He was real confident when I talked to him. He trained with Robert Drysdale. He's like, look, I know exactly what I need to do. I know how I need to get off. The I know how I can stay away from him. I know that I can avoid his submissions. So, I mean, knowing that coming in, anytime you have someone coming into a fight like that who feels that confident, that prepared. McSweeney just ate a good right hand, a short right hand from Gracie. Nice little push kick. Hodger starting to gain a little bit of confidence, so he wanted to get him off of him with the push kick. Very evenly balanced, isn't it, this contest? Two minutes left in this round. If we get to the end of this round, I'm fascinated to hear how Rich Franklin sees this one. And McSweeney has a cut, I think, above the right eye. Yeah, that's a nasty little cut. Yeah. He's bothered by it, wiping the blood away. The problem with cuts above the eye, especially if they're central like that, is that the blood runs into the eye, compromises, uh, sorry, interferes with the uh, vision significantly. You can see there he's dabbing away at it. Nice body kick from McSweeney. It's going to start to swell a little uh, bit, I think. Yes. There he goes. He's bothered by it. He was. He was dabbing at it, and he got caught, and he acknowledges that he got caught, and that's, that cut could be a problem. Hodger needs to keep the pressure on him and start and keep popping that jab, because it's right there on that side where he's going to land that jab. Oh, beautiful head kick from McSweeney. Don't forget, damage is a significant Lighting aspect of scoring. Round. And when we get to Rich, I'm sure he'll mention that and how it works in Hodger Gracie's favor. That last kick McSweeney threw, though, looked like he twisted his ankle, hurt his ankle a little bit. He was hobbling around for, this, for a split second. Suddenly, everything's turned against James McSweeney. A nice, evenly contested bout. And then he got caught with a cracking punch after having been cut. 
Let's see if we can listen in on McSweeney's corner in, uh, in between rounds. See if they're gonna take care of this cut. Hodgers looks like he's starting to grow a little bit of confidence. He's walking him down. He's putting punches and combinations together now. He needs to keep snapping that jab right into that cut. Hopefully that aisle swell between rounds and he can start coming to the well later, later on in the uh, third round. Let's hear from Rich Franklin on how he's scoring this fascinating contest. Well, who would have thought that this fight would end up being a stand-up battle <laughs> yeah. between Roger Gracie and James McSweeney? <laughs> Listen, th both these guys are going to add to the damage that they inflicted from the first round. I, because McSweeney landed the head kick there, Roger's opened him up. Looked like Roger actually hurt him a little bit. I actually have these two guys dead even on damage at this point in the fight. However, Roger shot in at one point in the fight. McSweeney had great takedown defense. The judges score that stuff. So if the fight stopped right now, it would have McSweeney ahead on the scorecard by decision. Back, back, back. Bye, right, guys. Break, wait, wait. Corner did a good job of stopping the blood from what I can see from here. But as you can tell, the swelling's already starting to set in. It's gonna make it a little bit harder for him to see out of that eye. Very sportsmanlike touch of gloves at the beginning of this third and final round. Rich Franklin has McSweeney marginally ahead for now. Five minutes could change all of that either way. What impact will that cut above McSweeney's right eye have? Have they staunched the flow? Will it open up and get worse? The kick there prevented from hitting the head by Gracie's right arm. Sweeney's still just switching his stance a little bit. He's kind of moving his head, keeping Hodger guessing, which is good. That's exactly what he needs to do to make sure that Hodger doesn't just jump in trying to get the takedown. Left hand from Gracie. Landed low on the face, nowhere near the eye. Needs to keep popping that jab, though. I think that's what he needs to do. Try and get it back open, try and get it bleeding again, try and get his vision impaired just for the rest of the round. Oh, 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 I think he actually changed direction on that kick. Mid execution, yes, incredible he did. stuff, and another good left hand from Gracie. See Gracie going to that jab. There, a little left hook. That's all he needs to do to me personally. That's all he needs to do now. As it's starting to bleed, you can see it's starting to bleed again. Now he needs to start looking to open up and throw that right hand right after. And you can bet that that jab will be targeting that eye for the next three and a half minutes. Action. Absolutely fascinated to see how the judges see this one. Oh, how nice body kick. You can tell that hurt Hodger a little bit. He dropped that elbow. He's backing off. Now McSweeney needs to look to go up top. Tried. Had a little think about the single leg there, Gracie. Didn't work out for him. There's that jab again. How unexpected a feature of this fight has that been. Oh, he's going back to that, that body kick again. He knows he hurt Hodger a little bit, so he's going to try and open it up again. Hodger, look at if you notice, Hodger's got that right elbow down low. So that means it's opening up that head kick now for McSweeney. Might just be getting a little arm weary, Hodger Gracie. It's, I think it's more of protecting the body on that <laughs> right think so? side. Yeah, because yeah, he knows McSweeney keeps going to that body on that, on that, that left side with the kick. Got that elbow low. If McSweeney was, was looking to set something up, I'd probably throw like a low body shot, and get Hodger to kind of tuck that elbow in and come back over the top with some sort of head kick. Not just stiff, that jab, it is accurate. He's clearly sending it up to the eye and he's, he's, got, he's got a good percentage up there in that area. Oh, the kick, looking for the sweep and, and McSweeney hurt himself with that oh, kick, and he's really body. struggling. He's really struggling, McSweeney, to stay on his rocked. feet, and he's gone down, and it could be finished now. He's got to land, and it's there, it's done. And it was all about, it was all about an injury to the ankle, I believe. 
I can't, I, can't, I can't say if that was a good stoppage or not yet. McSweeney looked like he was still trying to fight, but... I tell you what, I tell you what, he, he threw the kick and hurt his ankle, and it was clear that he wasn't going to stay on his feet for long. And once he went down there, what was he going to do? Remember I said in the second round when he threw a kick earlier, it looked like he hurt it a little bit. It was kind of wobbled. He kind of hurt. looked like he paused a little bit to put pressure on it. This round, he hits the kick, and you can tell it was automatic response. He couldn't put any pressure on, he started to circle, then he got hit with the tip kick to the body. He's already struggling here. And then, as you mentioned, Josh, the tip kick to the body. The left hand goes down, the right uppercut. It was a very good punch from Gracie. Now, there's the tip kick, and that hurt him just as much as the ankle, I think. You're right, I didn't see that first time. Good punches from Gracie. Now, this is where Olivier Cost is looking. McSweeney's not punching back, but really that's not a large number of punches. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Olivier Cost calls a halt to this battle at three minutes, 15 seconds of round number three for your winner via referee stoppage due to strikes, Hodger Gracie! We can debate the end of the fight all we want, but one thing's for sure, James McSweeney was uh, applauding his opponent as the decision was announced, and uh, we just see so much of that in this sport. Good sportsman, and honestly, I'd love to see this in a rematch.